This is another highly request voice AI tutorial. As you can see, over a hundred people want to see how I build this free voice AI agent, which is a hundred percent local, doesn't need a GPU, where your data is a hundred percent private and it's 100% free. Enjoy. Hello, can you hear me? Hello there. How can I assist you today? My name is Noor. What's your name? My name is Kai. It's nice to meet you, Noor. How can I help you today? I have a question. Okay, what's your question? What's 71 plus 83? 71 plus 83 equals 154. If you'd like me to build you a production-ready voice AI agent, feel free to contact me. I've been doing this for over one and a half years now, and we have multiple successful projects running in production, and I'm happy to show you demos anytime. You can find my contact information in the description below. This is an overview of what today's video is about. First, we are going to talk about the general setup, then about some interesting use cases where latency doesn't matter too much, and some pros and cons of this setup. Okay, let's start here. So for this setup, I'm using FastRTC. What is FastRTC? Short, we can say it's the fast API for real-time audio on video streaming. Long, we can say it's an open source real-time communication library for Python that enables developers to turn any Python function into an audio or video stream over WebRTC or WebSockets with ease. It streamlines the building of real-time AI applications, providing built-in voice detection, turn-taking, turn turn -taking, ready to use radio UI, temporary phone number support for audio streaming, and seamless integration with fast API. So what it does basically, it's orchestrating these three together. And what are these? So we are using Moonshine as our STD. So it's an open source STD, which makes it free to use. Same with the LLM. We are using Gamma as the LLM. I chose Gamma because it's the fastest LLM available to us right now. Why am I not using GBT OSS that came out recently. Yeah, for that reason, because it's not as, as fast as Gemma or Gamma, I don't know. Um, and as a TTS, I use Kokoro, which is also an open source TTS. So all of this makes our setup completely open source and private and free. Now, but it's not perfect, of course. It comes with some disadvantages too. Let's first re look at the pros. It's free, it's local, your data is private, runs on CPU, because with AI applications normally require GPU, but this one is capable of running on a CPU, which makes it very cost effective or free, <laughs> and because GPUs normally are really expensive. It's easy and fast setup. It's like literally two files and like 20 lines of code. You could use uncensored LLMs too. In this example, we are using the normal one, but there are also uncensored versions of Gamma. So you can use that too if you want. Some cons are uh, response times are three seconds or more, actually, sometimes. We will see that in the demo. DLLM is not the smartest, of course, um, but I'm really optimistic that there will be better ones too. It it gets the job done, but yeah, like it's not the smartest, as I said. So not the most realistic sounding voice. I think the voice is pretty good, but it's definitely not like an 11 laps level kind of voice. FastRTC is fairly new project, less advanced in function functionality. So yeah, I think it came out like early 2025. So you can check it out on their website. Um, just type fastrtc.com, I believe, and you will see like um, that it's pretty new and there is like not a lot of information and in general not a lot of functionality. But I think they will add more and more to it. Okay, some interesting use cases. So, language practice conversations where thinking time is natural. Makes sense. 
interactive journal writing when you're writing by hand or even on your computer i mean you need some thinking time and you don't need your agent to respond fast so that's a good use case too interactive household assistant um you could tell it to save some reminders to-do lists grocery lists yeah meditation guidance or mindfulness exercises also good one this is my favorite one because here this one is really something where latency is actually required memory ex exercises for el elderly or cognitively delayed individuals kids this is also my second favorite kids interactive bedtime storytelling assistant it's also a nice one and also because like you can use open source um, uncensored LLMs, so there can be some uncensored use cases too, which I'm not gonna go into much detail. But if you ha have some weird fantasies or stuff like that, you can use it for these purposes too. In the next section, I'm setting up a cloud server, but you don't have to do this. As I said, you can use this on your local computer. I'm doing this because I don't have enough uh, space on my computer and I want to show you the performance of the agent in an isolated way. But if you want to do it the way I do, you can do it through Hetzner. You can get $20 of free credits if you use my link. Okay, first we are going to create a server on Hetzner. For your location, you're going to choose one that is nearest to you. This is mine. This you can leave as is. And here I want to tell you like what um, specs you need for your computer in order for this to work properly. So I'm going to use this one for this tutorial. But this one is fine too. The only difference is that this one is a little faster than this one. But um, you can have a computer with four or eight cpus will be fine and at least 16 gigabytes of ram yeah i'm going to choose my ssh key and then we are going to call it post rtc and let's create it Okay, our server is live now and we are going to log into it. This is the command that I use to log into my uh, server. Um, but this is where my SSH key is located, but you probably don't need that. Yeah, so you can just delete this. In your case, if your SSH key is located in your normal, regular place, and then we need this so that we can use our local host through our remote server yeah and this is how we are logging into now we are saying yes and now i'm asked to give my passphrase and now i'm inside of my server so now we are going to follow this guide that i just created and we will just copy and paste all the commands here and um, if you want this guide comment guide and i will send it to you so first thing that we need to do is we need python 3.13 yeah because that's what fast rtc needs and yeah we are just going to follow these steps here one by one Okay, the next thing, so these steps so far are just for installing Python, enter. If you have Python 3.13, then you don't need this step. Um, update. okay and this yes and now we are going to install olama 
because we need our LLM. And now we need our LLM here, gamma three. It's pulling it. Awesome. And now we are creating a directory and going into that directory. Let's let that finish. Okay, are we inside? Yes, we are now here inside of this directory. And now we will be creating just two files. We only need two files here, which is PyProject Toml and CodePy. And we are going to just uh, copy paste that. Okay, so if you need to make any changes, you can do them. Here you probably don't need to do anything. So here, um, if you want to change the prompt, you can change it here. Um, what else can you change? Yeah, if you want to use another model, you can change it here. Exactly. Okay, now let's continue here. Activate our environment. And pip. Pip install the dependencies. And Let's start our agent after this download completed. Okay, let's start this. It takes a couple of seconds. Warming up, warmed up. Nice. And now we can just um log into our into our local host okay this is looking good and let's try this guys if you haven't joined my discord community feel free to join it because here we are really discussing a lot of uh, useful voice AI advice and tips and you can find a lot of people with same interests here. We are like over 1000 people in here is for free and you can here I have a help channel where you can ask your questions and you can also have like general conversations about voice AI. Here are some opportunities, uh, job offers, stuff like that. Yeah, just feel free to join. Hello, can you hear me? Hello there. How can I assist you today? My name is Noor. What's your name? My name is Kai. It's nice to meet you, Noor. How can I help you today? I have a question. Okay, what's your question? What's 71 plus 83? 71? Plus 83 equals 154. And can you tell me a scary story? Okay, here's a story for you. It's a bit unsettling, so be warned. The rain had been falling for three days straight. A relentless, drumming rain that seemed to soak into everything. 
I live in a small, isolated cottage near the coast, a place I'd always loved for okay, its solitude. Stop. But lately, Can you now tell me a funny story. Okay. Okay, here's a story I think you might find amusing. A man walks into a library and asks the librarian for books about paranoia. The librarian whispers, okay. they're right behind mm -hmm. you. Okay, Did you enjoy stop. that one? Can you tell me? Hello there. Hello you... there. Do How can believe... I assist? Do you believe in God? If what? Hello there. Okay. Hello there. How can I help you today? Do you believe in God? That's a really thoughtful question. As an AI, I don't believe in anything in the way a human does. Belief is rooted in personal experience, faith, and emotion things I don't possess. However, I can access and process information about the concept of God from countless sources, religious texts, philosophical arguments, scientific theories, and personal testimonies. I understand the arguments for and against the existence of God and the profound impact the belief in God has had on human history. Okay, so this is obviously not the best voice AI agent that you've ever seen, but I just wanted to demonstrate the potential of it because the fact that this whole thing is running on CPU, in my opinion, is the most amazing thing. And it just shows like what could be possible if we worked more on this project. What I really liked is the quality of the voice. I think the voice sounded pretty natural. You probably noticed that when it gave short answers, the latency was pretty low. And when it gave longer answers, like the story part, then the latency was higher. So what could be done in this case is if we don't need long answers, then we could optimize the LLM so that it outputs only short answers. Another improvement that could be done is the interruption handling. You notice that it interrupted me quite a lot, so that could be improved too. Let me know if any of you are working on those improvements. Guys, I really want to know about the projects that you build using FastRTC. So if you have something to show, please do so, post about it on LinkedIn and on Twitter. Follow me, tag me in it, and I will repost your projects. Also feel free to DM me. If you like voice AI tutorials, especially open source ones, follow and turn on notifications so you don't miss any in future. If you'd like to know about how to set up a WhatsApp voice AI agent, then watch my next video. Bye.